You're welcome to the polling station. It's a very, very sad day, a uh, very sad day for Britain as Priti Patel steps down as uh, Home Secretary. Uh, I don't know how it's going to recover. On the other hand, Liz Truss has taken over uh, officially as the leader of the Conservative Party. Everything is going to be absolutely fine. And you are welcome to the show with Johnny Ward, William Kajani and Paul Krishnamurti. And I want to start with you, William. Talk to me about how this played out markets wise. She's been sort of one to 12 unbackable odds for quite some time. It's officially been confirmed. Her problems now begin. Yeah, indeed it does. Um, welcome, Liz Trust, to running the UK. It's going to be pretty brutal. Um, in terms of how we did, um, actually reasonably well because she beat Rishi Sunak. Um, now, people might look at this and think, hang on, um, a 1 to 50 shot gagging up. Um, it should not be great news for a bookmaker, but this has been a very long running anti post market. It has. Uh, and not just that also, but you have to remember, you've had high volumes of betting in certain periods and those eyebrows have all been carried over. So it's not just a load of people who jumped on this trust, she went up really short and did a load of our money. Um, Richie Sunak was very popular. You have to remember, he was talked up as the natural heir to Boris Johnson. It looks as if his chances are gone. Some people, uh, particularly those below me, were more wiser than that. Um, and then we saw support from again, and we've seen sort of the lumpier, bigger support and the waste that support behind him. So in the end, we actually ended up doing well, winning, thanks to Trust, beating Sunak. Um, she went probably a bit too short, too quickly, I think, um, for, I'd say, the vast majority of casual punters with us. Mm. Um, and luckily, I think it worked out okay. Um, interesting, just on the polling as well, because we had a market on how much of the voter share for the Tories she'd get. Um, we did. The very strong favourite was somewhere between 60 to 65%, 60 to 64.99. And it was beat. It was beat, yeah. She came in at 57.8. Um, pretty comprehensive. It's, it's around 15 points, I think, 50% uh, for the margin of victory. But um, much less than the polls have predicted. Um, it was about 15, un it was at nine under the big Yuga poll that sort of set the race. So overall, she won and won well, um, but not with a mega mandate. And um, it was a decent enough result for us. Yeah, and um, we will talk shortly about some of the special markets to do with uh, her uh, predecessor, Boris Johnson, what he's going to do in 2023. We have an exit date for Liz Truss. I haven't looked into that market yet. I'm fascinated as to when it's going to all collapse for her. And um, we've next um, permanent prime minister as well and all the usual markets. Um, I just want to uh, talk to you, Paul. This was something that I was in the Irish press yesterday. This is the Irish um, view, I suppose, of what's happening in Britain. The aging WB Yates complaining, sailing to Byzantium, that his soul stuck in his increasingly decrepit body was fastened to a dying animal. With the absurd accession of Liz Truss to 10 Downing Street, it increasingly feels like Ireland too is tethered to a moribund creature. And when you see the um, outgoing statement from Pretty Patel, I think she got like four and a half thousand likes for her um, departure on Twitter, whereas somebody who was essentially wishing her good riddance um, got 150,000 likes. And this is one of the things she said, which I thought was quite staggering, really. Um, over the last three years, uh, our approach to reforming immigration laws and fixing our broken asylum system has been firm and fair. I know how frustrating the issue of cr channel crossings has been. We have used our Brexit freedoms to take back control of our immigration laws with a new points-based immigration system. Our historic Immigration Act has ended free movement and taken back control of our borders. And I love this. We can now attract the brightest and best from around the world to the UK rather than face the adverse effects of uncontrolled free movement. Well, at least she's gone. Look, they, I mean, Priti Patel and her real clearly inhabit the same post-truth universe as Donald Trump. It, it, it's irrelevant what she said because it's going to be wrong. If Britain's got control of its borders, I'd love to know how. And look, that's it's another subject for another day, how awful and inhumane Priti Patel's policies are. Um, I've just got to say on Liz Truss, look, I'm not, look, I mean, I don't hide my politics and I'm not a fan of Liz Truss or any Tory, but I do also think that those of us who are not Tories, at this point in time, we've got to just hold fire a bit and give her a chance and not jump to premature dismissals of her chances. 
there is an element of this that is a bit like Margaret Thatcher in 79, where Labour thought that, you know, Thatcher was an easy opponent, just a weak candidate, no charisma, poor on the telly. And you know what? Thatcher got the best PR team in the game behind her. And events made her, right? And she ended up transforming in that image. I don't, you know, she wouldn't have been my selection. If, if I was a Tory, I'd have picked Penny Morden. Mm. I'd have thought she was a much better candidate. But trust is not an idiot. I, I don't buy that at all. And she wouldn't be there if she was an idiot. She wouldn't have got support from so many cabinet ministers if she was an idiot. Um, the energy price freeze, which they're announcing, I think that will go down very well. I think there's a, you know, let's let's just re replay the last couple of years. You must have had like great sex last night or something. You're in an incredibly good, benign form today. You're just like almost praising Liz Truss as somebody that uh, is almost to be welcomed. If only I had good sex last night. If only. <laughs> Would have been on a plane. Dining <laughs> in. <laughs> um, what is she, though? What is, I mean, she, okay, she's an ex-Lib Lib Dem. She obviously was against Brexit, then she was with it. I, I, I honestly don't know how this is going to work out. How is she going to handle the pressure? How is she going to keep her subordinates on side? How is she going to, you know, preside over, a, you know, a party that does have a lot of factions, it has to be said as well, and is quite divided? That's a massive problem. And, and I mean, I'm not in any sense underplaying the issues that she faces, right? or bigging her up as some fantastic candidate, because I've never thought that. But let's just replay the last couple of years. Not long ago, pretty much everyone was of the view that Labour couldn't win the next election. They were that unpopular, that toxic, right? And then we had COVID, and all of the, you know, the engaged commentariat, who we are all part, were very quick to denounce the idiocy of some of the government's policies and the dishonesty, right? And then, lo and behold, they started holding daily press conferences, acting as if they were taking the thing really seriously, delivered a vaccine that, you know, any half-competent government would have delivered, and they got a bounce. And people started coming on social media and saying, leave them alone, they're doing their best, and all this stuff, right? Now... The non-engaged commentary, which is the overwhelming majority of people, they've just spent the last couple of months petrified that they're going to be ruined by energy bills, mm. right? It is no coincidence that a couple of weeks ago, Labour got their biggest bounce in ages simply because Keir Starmer came out and said we will freeze energy bills, right? So I was just waiting for someone to lead. And the Tories have fallen backwards, probably in, in addition to Boris Johnson, in addition to Party Day and all the rest of it. They have, um, I think people have probably looked at the government and said they're asleep at the wheel, they're not doing anything, we're in crisis, where are their answers, where are their solutions? Well, now we've got one, right? Maybe a good one, maybe a bad one, that's actually relevant. And I think a lot of people will be grateful that the government is doing something and freezing energy bills. And that might just neutralise the issue, because I think that most people in this country aren't particularly political. They really, it turns them off for me a mention of it. Yeah. And they're quite happily blamed Vladimir Putin for the gas prices, right? And anyone who's standing up to him and delivering for them will get a fair hearing. Now, I just think it's perfectly plausible that the Tories come back a bit in the polls, maybe even take the lead somewhere, and then they've got the boundary changes, and then Trust will be seen to have done a good job, and no one's going to challenge her in, those situ in that situation. Yeah, it, it is it, like Labour are still backable at ten to eleven to get the most seats at the next election. I think it's a, a shocking indictment of Labour at the moment. In that, it, there should be a situation where Labour is strong favour. Conservatives have become an absolute joke, in my view. Liz Truss will make Johnson seem a political genius. May a mistress of empathy, Cameron a beacon of sincerity. That was the same article in the Irish Times, William, uh, that was written by Fintan O'Toole, which is re it was really a damning indictment of what Britain has become. What do you expect of Liz Truss? Um, I expect that she will work harder than Boris Johnson did and that she will do more of the day-to-day -day basics than he did. Um, and I think that alone will be of help to her um, because we have to remember a lot of Boris Johnson's problems came from two things. And his downfall, first of all, eventually came from the fact he cared about no rules or laws. Mm. Um, th that's eventually where it headed to. Um, not to mention, of course, the fact that there were certain influential figures around him who I think gave him very poor advice. Um, also, I don't believe he was the greatest assistant of all time. 
you're not going to get as much of that individual chaos with trust. That will probably help her. Um, I think what do I expect from her? I expect Boris Johnson style communication. I expect sort of optimism as much as she can fit in. Uh, I expect ideology. Um, I think she's been on a political journey. I believe her to be the woman that the ERG mostly thinks she is. And I think we'll see that in her cabinet. I think we'll see that in at least the way they present themselves politically, if not quite the way they conduct themselves, that makes sense. What, what ideology, um, though, like, William, what, what is her ideology? Because I, I, don't, I don't know this. I mean, you know, she seems to be a... Sorry? Libertarianism. Libertarian. Okay, well, at least, you know, these are my principles, and if you don't like them, I'll change them. Maybe she does stand for something. I don't know, William. What, 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 what's going what's gonna to be the mark of this government post the collapse of the the, the, the Johnson re regime eventually she it's a low bar that she's coming off it is I think the thing is with Johnson right he didn't get the chance to do the things that he did for two reasons number one they just weren't that interested in governing there were a group of campaigners who took over the building in my view I have to make it's a very personal political view um, and secondly events dictated for them um, events are going to dictate at least the first two years of the trust premiership. Um, her task is to get into a state where she can fight the next election um, without having seen everything come crashing down. It's, it's, it's really scary to say. That's a very big task at the moment. Um, there are a huge amount of problems facing the country. Um, in terms of what marks she'll leave, um, it really just depends on whether they have the ability to offer the country something within the next 18, 24 months or so. If they can get there and they can fight a general election, they might win the chance to have something more permanent. But I think it, this is a time of crisis. It's a crisis premiership. Um, the job there is to steer Britain into 2024. Um, and that's an incredibly difficult task. I, I, I personally think politics has become so utterly toxic now that you either go into it because you're kind of a bit of an idiot in the first place or it just wears you down to the extent that you become an idiot in the end because a lot of the public are just like absolute assholes you get a lot of abuse and I think a lot of decent people just don't want to do it anymore and you're left with a situation where these I mean these conservative candidates for the for the you know the leadership I mean if they were in a if they were in a pub you'd be you'd be trying to avoid them I mean they wouldn't be people that you want to go over and talk to that's my opinion I'm going to talk to you Paul now because you actually are a person I, I like to talk to Liz Trust leave office here. I have no idea how this is priced up, but it is 2024, 11 to 8 favourite. 2025 or later, probably one of the worst bets of all time at 6 to 4. 2023, 7 to 2. 2022 is 12s. I'm not ruling it out. Okay, totally disagree. I'm on the 2025. I think, okay. because I'll tell you why. First of all, okay, uh, important. Safe pair of hands. This is the end of the, this is to not be leader of the Conservative Party, right? Yeah, well. To be, yeah, so to be not, to be no longer yeah. leader from her exit date from the party. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah sorry, as leader, party. sorry, as leader. So, so, I, so I, I don't think we'll see an election until the very last moment that is possible, which would be um, I sh very late. Is it December 2024, Will? Okay. Yeah, you could, have, you could have one that late in December, and yes, it could take us into 2025. Yeah, now, now, even if it was in October, right, I do personally think the next government will be led by Keir Starmer, I think it'd be a coalition. But at that stage, I don't see them having a rapid leadership contest as they've just done. I mean, you've got Christmas coming up. Will they really want to be going around doing hustings in December when they know that there's probably a five-year government ahead of them in opposition? And I think she would nominally be leader into 2025 then, even if she lost the election. And then they might not lose the election. OK. I, I don't really see them. I, I know there's a lot of speculation. But they're, favor they're, favorites for the, they're favorites for the most seats still. Yes, exactly. So, so you can't dismiss them. And we've got boundary changes to come. Mm. Right, so it is possible. And I don't see... Um, I don't see an early, a really early exit. I mean, okay, if they stay 17, 15% behind the polls, yes, that's a possibility. But I mean, how ridiculous would the Tories look if they ditched another leader next yeah. year? In the yeah, okay. I yeah. just think they're going to make the best of what they've got now. Oh. And, and who would want to inherit it? You know? <laughs> 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 
this is it. Actually, I want to get you on that, William, because um, a, a video emerged of her today um, giving a speech to the Conservative Party conference, give or take two or three years ago, about the greatness of British apples and selling tea to China. And I was like, how, how in the name of God is like it was it was absolute car crash cringe. How is this person leader of the Conservatives? Maybe she's become a political giant in the meantime when she takes over. And maybe Paul is right that she'll steady the ship and they, they don't want to replace her. Is it, a, is it a united party behind her or will there be people sniping behind the scenes to undermine her? There'll be people sniping behind the scenes to undermine her. That's just a fact of life of British politics. It's a fact of life of the Conservative Party. Um, I think uh, just on Paul's thoughts there, I would agree I can't see an early exit for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, They've only just had the, the leadership election. Um, there'll be a bit of bedding in time at least. Um, quite a few people, I know people will be disgruntled, but most will be happy they've been given jobs or whatever. There won't be the, the want for upheaval as well. I think you'd also um, upset a lot of members. You know, it's 57.4 voted for her. It's, it's not the biggest majority mm. or mandate that she's ever had, but it's, it would be enough to be a lot of membership upset. Um, also, again, it would be a horrible look politically. It'd be a horrible look for a government to then decide to press the reset button before you've gotten any serious legislation down. Um, if the first six months don't work out um, and you begin to get 70s style crisis mode, maybe. But then again, you have the issue of nobody wanting to take that job. Um, and also you have the issue of how long does this thing take? You know, this one took six weeks and the current... The, last Prime Minister checked out, so nobody ran the country essentially all summer. I don't know if um, Conservative strategists want to do all of that all over again. I would be inclined to, to look to the later years. I think um, I think if Trust can get the first six months or so right, i.e. head above water and um, whatever, and we have to remember that I think we're dealing with a woman who's profoundly more competent in, in in governmental affairs and Boris Johnson never was, um, then I think she should feel reasonably hopeful with the majority of making it to 24. And, and then it's about the timing of the general election. I, I'm inclined to agree with Paul. I think they'll run it as long as is possible so that you can attempt to build their own bridges, attempt to build their own policies, etc. Yeah, it is one to four. Um, it is one to four, Paul, that the next election is in 24 or later. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's a certainty to be there. But let's also not forget, you know, firstly, that political narratives, reputations are very short-lived now. You know, people just forget what happened three months ago. And the press, we know what the Tory press are going to do. She will be Queen Elizabeth. She will be Queen Elizabeth, you know, the great defender of her people. There will be Union Jacks everywhere, right? And... You know, unless the Tory party is in absolute free fall, I think they stick with her. I don't see who's going to challenge her either, apart from Boris yeah. Johnson. And this is the thing. This is the mad thing. There is this, and it may be true. I, I don't know. I mean, th we're living in such crazy times. But there is this theory going around that the reason why Truss was selected as continuity Johnson was because the people around Johnson could think she's so bad that she'll flop. And then Boris can come in and save the party. <laughs> Into the next election. <laughs> maybe that is a plan somewhere. It's an insane plan, right? But maybe, right? We've seen it with Trump, right? When you get narcissists <laughs> in office, anything I, happens. I, I've I've heard I've heard crazier things. Before we move on from this, I uh, did enjoy the uh, person who commented. I think it was on Twitter that Pretty Patel was the type of person who would. Plug out the life your life uh, plug out your life support machine to plug in her phone and then somebody replied even if her phone were on ninety two percent which I, <laughs> I thought was like this is the person that's in the Conservative Party just one one thing before you go Paul what does what does this mean for Scottish independence or does it have any effect on it at all I don't mean it does because I think that um, frankly the yes vote which is you know overwhelming it all goes to the SNP. It's going to keep falling short of 50%. Um, I think it's very hard, it's going to be very hard for them to win a referendum in any circumstance. And the Tories will 
revel in denying them it. And again, this is another bad thing for Labour. This is another reason to think that this helps them. This really suits the Conservatives and the SNP, this dividing line. Labour have got, whenever we talk about nationality or identity, Labour have got nothing to say because they're a collectivist party, mm. right? You know, that's not a popular position to take. And, you know, I guess that, that, that this, this will carry on and Labour will continue to be fairly irrelevant in, in Scotland. I mean, I suppose the best route for Labour there is to kind of usurp the unpopular Tories in Scotland as the Nationalist Party, but it's got Just limited size. Sticking with the sticking with the Labour team, um, William, what what does Keir Starmer make of all this? What's he going to do going forward? I, I, it looks like he's just been sitting in the sidelines, letting Boris make a fool of himself. What does he do now? I think that he still plays it cool. I don't think I don't think personally it's going to suit him to start being very aggressive against trust. But I think he's also smart that. I think they're also better informed than that. Um, what Labour I think will be doing is they will see what the trust energy plan is. They'll choose their best points of attack against it. Um, we've seen bits of this. Um, Angela Rayner, I believe, was on, I think it was Breakfast with Sky News, and talking about the fact that one of the proposed trust energy plans, and by the way, there are like three or four that are being briefed. There's going to be an intervention, but depending on who you listen to, it will be paid to differently. It will be targeted a little bit differently. And Rayner was making the point, I don't think totally incorrectly, that... Um, you need a more permanent change in the way that we consume energy because otherwise you just throw money on top of the problem. And if you're going to cover, say, a certain amount of energy bills, you could be having a 50 billion pound bigger bill or an 80 billion pound bigger bill. So you might see attacks like that. Um, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one because trust um, is not as easy to attack as I think some people have led themselves to believe. Um, you, you know, she has sort of the backing, I mean, she'll have to back in the press, which will, is something every Labour leader will have to deal with. Um, I don't think she's going to make as, she won't make as many obvious mistakes as Johnson will. Um, I know Johnson got away with a lot of them, but I, I have my Mr. Byrne sort of all the diseases at once theory, the same thing with Trump. I think Truss will be smarter than that. What Starmer needs to do is he needs to focus relentlessly on Labour having a positive offering um, and Labour having something to encourage people to vote for them, because they are not now in a position where you can just go, would you look at the state of this mm. and expect that to be a motivating factor in turnout? And speaking, uh, speak, speaking of the state of this, this is a this is a terrific market. What will Boris do in 2023? Uh, <laughs> the favourite is <laughs> the favourite is to release a set of memoirs. Um, to be interviewed by Will Kajani is a hundreds. I. I actually might. I might actually have a few. I might have a few quid on that. You know, each way, each way late as well. Um, this is a great market, William. This is the thing you need to get into that Tory press to promote uh, Star Sports. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're having a lot of fun with it. We're hoping to get some stuff up, possibly for stuff that happened during PMQs, um, which will be happening tomorrow. The time you see this, um, I do think we've got a couple of bets here. Um, we're two to one to the set of memoirs, which I genuinely think is a really good bet. I, I absolutely think he'll he's he'll try and finish one within the first half of the year because he's desperate um, to start making the big money, the big Theresa May star money. There'll be a lot of speeches, by the way. Boris Johnson is going to do an awful lot of tours and speeches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know how the meme became a rare intervention from Tony Blair? Yeah, that's actually blown out of the water. You're going to hear from Boris Johnson once every three hours, but like yeah. for money. Um, we've got a few. I'll run through them here. We're three to one at some point. He comes back into cabinet next year. We're six to one. He's knighted. Um, we're seven. He appears on Celebrity Gogglebox. Um, these are interesting. I might have had a hand in these. Ten, he becomes Telegraph editor. Twelve, he becomes a permanent host of a podcast. Um, by the way, the way we'll settle the podcast thing is just simply if. He has chosen as the lead presenter for a podcast, probably solo, and there are five episodes or so of it. So that's so, too much hard work, Will. To, yeah, this is the thing. This is why I'm happy to take the risk. I just I, I don't see him committing to doing. I mean, Johnny, there is no way he could do what you do. I genuinely mean that. There is just no way he could do what you do. He couldn't hack it. Yeah. Um, and we've got a few other ones, um, including. 52 appear in a Shakespeare play, 33 Strictly, 20 Soccerade, 
and to be interviewed by me is a hundred to one. I'm making the business we speak. I am not hopeful. Um, let's be honest with you. I, I've seen worse 100 to one shots, Paul. <laughs> the strangest things have happened, absolutely. Will's a star. Boris should be desperate to speak to any decent journalist. Well, I think you're probably too smart for him personally. I think, you know, if he's not oh, to the permanent oh. resident of the Laura Coonsberg show, then. Oh, jeez, yeah, <laughs> she's, she's had an interesting week. Let's, let's move on before we finish up to the US, Paul, um, since we last spoke. Well, what's been happening? Well, um, Trump's lawyers have somehow got a special master to uh, review the um, evidence that the FBI took from Mar-a-Lago. And I mean, first, this is a ridiculous ruling, but you know, we've been here before, haven't we, with Republican judges. But what that's probably going to do is mean that this has no quick ending and Trump isn't going to be charged this year, uh, unless the DOJ have an alternative plan. Um, Betting wise, I think that I still think that is just really bad news for the Republicans. They need to move on. It, it does appear that the red wave has just dissipated in, in recent weeks. Uh, Biden made a speech. I mean, I, I'm, I'm on the fence here, but it's a good idea. I loved it. I was like cheering when I was listening to it. Biden calling out extreme MAGA Republicans, just yeah. threatening to do everything. But I am wary that any speech that I am cheering may not necessarily chime with average swing voter in America. But um, my feeling is that the Democrats are going to do pretty well. They're going to retain the Senate. I'm very confident about that. Um, I think I think it was 46 last time I looked at it. It's a fabulous bet. Um, and well, another little thing about it, if the Democrats retain the Senate, it becomes impossible for Trump to rig the next election. Yeah. Which kind of, you know, He's getting on. If he wants to come back, he's running out of time. Um, so you might well be in a position where the Republicans decide, do we, are we so scared of the repercussions that we will pick a candidate who cannot win? He still evens, he still evens favour of William to be the nominee. Hmm. Yeah, but that's basically, I think, fair because it's a 50-50 if he runs, he wins thing. You're hmm. essentially now betting versus the law pretty much with him if he manages to avoid um the indictments for the charges that prevent him from running for that long i imagine he'll run i imagine he'll win um general not something i'm too willing to be confident about all of that said every single with every single day um i see biden become more confident and more self-assured and and it's it's the simple basic things it's the things that you two have been doing um, for, for years, years, you know, and the things that people outside of America have been saying, but there's a big sort of mental block for democratic politicians, and politicians especially, and a president who needs to get as many votes as is possible in a swing state. So that change in you know, him calling out the hecklers, um, him sort of firing back at the press on the White House lawn, they, they seem to be small things. They're not, they're really significant. No, I, you can see a change in Biden in the last month or two in terms of his confidence and so on. He looks as sharp as I can remember him being since he was VP. Mm. And when he's around there, people forget he was a very sharp um, politician in terms of his, his comms, but by the standard of, of US um, politicians. So yeah, I think that's um, interesting. Um, I've also seen a couple of pieces on 538 um, just ranking most likely upsets. And I think it's probably worth keeping just an eye on what the forecast is the same, because there are a lot of um, Republicans who appear to be in some peril, but it varies widely. So pick your states if you're betting state to state. Yeah, last, last words. Uh, go ahead, Paul, sorry. I have been piling in to Biden for the nomination over the past couple of weeks. I can't believe the price is holding up. I just think, look, it's two to one, nine to four, that kind of price. Come the midterms, they will hold the Senate. It will be deemed, at worst, a draw for Biden, a decent result, given mm. everything that's going on. And it will be even money best in that situation, maybe odds on, because the decision's got to come pretty soon. If he's going to retire, he's got to really announce it in the first three months of next year and allow others to make a bid. And I just don't think he's going to do that. If he's just held the Senate, he doesn't want to be a lame duck president for the last two years. Absolutely. I, I think, it, and it, his confidence at a high as well, and maybe apart from does want to fight this this horrific um, horrific Trump mania. Last word to you, William. What have we got to look forward to? If, if there's anything to look forward to in life anymore? 
<laughs> my word um we'll have the boris johnson specials up hopefully for a little while more um we'll be building more stuff um over the next coming weeks some um, party conference season is not that far away so do stay tuned um and also we do have betting on who the next conservative leader will be very quickly on that we'll get more into it later um but kemi badenock and kwasi kwarteng seven to one joint favorites um, and I think it's 10 to Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is still quite high in the betting, amazingly, to be the next PM, to be the next Tory leader. So, yeah, all to play for. And of course, Liz Truss's big energy announcement. What is in that mystery treasury box? Yeah, so much to look forward to. So much to look forward to. And you didn't, you didn't quite hear, hear it here first because Paul is relaying it. Maybe Boris, he knows exactly what he's doing and he's going to come back. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.